The Marvels was directed by Nia Da Costa and is the 33rd Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. This one connects very thoroughly with the Disney Plus shows that have preceded it, like WandaVision and Miss Marvel, as you probably expect. And it's also a sequel to the first Captain Marvel movie. And in this one, the three leads, played by Brie Larson, Tiona Paris, and Iman Vellani, have to reunite together because of a body swapping issue that seems to be going on with their powers. And as a result of it, they're not quite Quite able to figure out what happens next when it comes to dealing with a big threat that could destroy the entire galaxy and maybe a little bit more and that's really all I can say about the movie because that's pretty much the plot of the movie. Now, it is very important to note that if you have not seen WandaVision or Miss Marvel, you're probably going to be lost with this movie because right out the gate, and I'm just being very upfront over here, there's no character development when it comes to either Monica Rambo or Kamala Khan. Whatever you saw in those shows, that is the knowledge that you need to be going into. This is something that I expected to happen at some point because there's no way that you watch these shows in isolated events and go, all right, I can watch the movies now and they can be their own thing. At some point they were going to connect and this is that point where they have absolutely connected. And this starts, in fact, pretty much five seconds after the end of Miss Marvel when the body swapping happens between Kamala and Carol. And now we're in the action. And Nia DaCosta makes a movie that's very quick. It's the shortest MCU movie to date at one hour and 45 minutes. It's a very quick one hour 45 minutes at that. And there is a lot of fun to be had in this movie. I'm going to cut to the chase with the positives. The leads have really great chemistry in this. I thought the three of them did a really good job. I think Brie Larson is the best that she's been in all three movies that we've seen her with so far. That being Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, and even the little moment in Shang-Chi, if you want to count that. I think this is the best that they've done with her and you get some really emotionally resonant stuff with her in some points which I thought was really really great. Tiona Paris also really really good in this movie very charismatic very energetic presence and does a really great job with it but as you're probably expecting, the standout of this movie is Iman Vellani. She did an incredible job as Miss Marvel in her own show, and at the time I said that this is one of the best castings in the MCU. I stand by that because I think what she's doing over here is also really, really great, and she is such an enigmatic presence throughout the entire movie, and she steals every scene that she's in, and I cannot wait to see what else they do with this character. Easily one of the best additions to the MCU that I've seen in a long time, especially when it comes to getting that character so right. And they've done a great job with that over here. The action is also incredibly nifty. There's a lot of fun sequences. There's a very fun opening action sequence that pretty much sets you up for the kind of thing you're going to get for the rest of the movie. And they did a really, really good job with that. And there's a few other sequences as the film progresses, which is incredibly fast-paced, that are also incredibly well done. There's some really great camera work that DaCosta applies, and you get some very fun visuals with it too. Although it is a little bit in consistent when it comes to some of the visual effects. There are some scenes that look really, really dazzling, and there's a few sequences that don't look quite as much, and there's objects in certain scenes that don't look very good. There's a lot of that going on over here, but there are some things that look very visually striking, so those points, it's pretty great. This has been a bit of an issue when it comes to the MCU recently. There's been so much that VFX gets a bit unwieldy, and there are moments where that's a culprit over here. Where the film, however, suffers is in the storytelling, because at the point which this movie is taking place, so much has happened before that's led up to this moment, and some of the stuff we just don't really know about. For instance, we have the backstories for Monica and Kamala. So we know that, you know, we, we know how Monica got her powers. We know that the hex thing in one division happened and that resulted in that. We know this. We also know how Kamala got her powers and we have seen her origin story. But Carol has had 30 years between movies when it comes to what's been going on with her. And except for the moment where she's in Endgame a bit, we don't really know what she's been up to. And so the movie kind of fills us in with some details, but it almost feels like there's a whole movie we didn't see. 
And uh, th there's a friend of mine who said it best, another critic. He was like, we went into the third Captain Marvel movie without having a second Captain Marvel movie. Which makes perfect sense because we get snippets of what was probably a second Captain Marvel movie in here. And that was very interesting. And I wish that we actually got that entire tale told. But it's just reserved to a few moments. And it results in a movie that's way too stuffed at times. Because there's a Captain Marvel plot going on in here, but there's also a sequel to Miss Marvel in here and to WandaVision. There's also set up to greater things to come in the MCU. And there's also a subplot going on about the Kree and what's happened with them since the first Captain Marvel movie, which connects to the villain Dar Ben, played by Zawi Ashton, like I said. Now, Dar Ben as a villain, not great. This is uh, one of the least memorable villains, I would say, when it comes to the MCU. A very clear motive, for sure, but extremely underdeveloped. And we don't really get much time to really discuss things. It seems like a lot of stuff in the movie happens within a second's notice, and it just seems to be the way we're going to do these things. It's, it, that's how they roll with it, and that just seems to be how that works. And it gets a little too unwieldy as a result of that. It doesn't take away from the fun factor. It is very entertaining. Like I said, hour 45 minutes, they fly by. This is a very fast movie. And you get to do a lot of hopping around and location-wise. And there's some fun stuff there. But unfortunately, it does remain a little bit too big for its own good at times. I'm actually... One of, this is one of the few times where I wish a superhero movie was a bit longer. Like, this could have used 25 more minutes at least. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's some stuff that eventually, like, shows up in, like, a... Like, like the Blu-ray is going to have some deleted scenes that for sure are going to take this to another level. But I am very interested in, like, seeing some of this develop a little bit more down the line. That, again, they're not saying that the movie is not entertaining. It absolutely is, but it's just, it's a bit too much at times. Overall, though, if you do want to go see the movie, I do recommend, first of all, seeing the shows, because, like I mentioned, this is definitely a movie that relies on pre-existing knowledge of certain things. So if you have not watched WandaVision or especially Miss Marvel, the movie's not going to fill you in on who these people are again. Like, you are expected to know this going in. Some stuff they do expect you to know, which you don't know, which was a little different, but otherwise that is a very important precursor for this viewing experience. But if you have seen the shows and if you are excited to see the movie and you were a fan of Captain Marvel in general, then I think you're going to have a pretty fun time with the Marvels. It's not the best Marvel movie by any means, but it's also not the disaster it seems to have been publicized as by certain, you know, tabloids and journalistic pieces over the last few weeks. It's not nearly like that. It's just a movie that's fun but flawed. And yes, as you probably have been hearing murmurs about, very big end credit scene that's going to get some reactions and I... I'm looking forward to hearing those thoughts soon. I'm gonna give the Marvels a 7 out of 10. A fun time. It's just, it's, it's not amazing, but it's entertaining. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to more videos very, very soon. And as always, if you like this, please do subscribe. And I will see you guys in the movies.